Hey everyone, this is Tim again here with a rare, rare second video of the day, but I was thinking again, this time it was about Absalom and how actually, how tragic of a story Absalom is. And on top of that, how easy it is for us today to fall into the same trap he did. I've spoken on this before, and I've also heard uh, other preachers preach on Absalom. The thing is, though, most people will focus on one thing about Absalom, and they'll say that was the root of it. I don't think it was just one thing. I think it was ultimately a journey, multiple things, and I will point this out as we go. The first thing is Absalom was frustrated. He, Absalom's sister had gotten raped and the person who did it had walked free. So Absalom, instead of talking to David or things, he focused on some, on the fact that what he thought was justice was not served. Here you see frustration turn into the spirit of vengeance. There's a reason why God says that um, to give it to me and vengeance is mine. God's idea of vengeance is exalting you Man's idea of vengeance is humbling them. And this is the part of, that Absalom did not see. He was focused so much on the person getting what they had coming to him that he just kind of decided that he was going to humble them no matter what, including trying to overthrow his own father. Then, when you see the spirit of vengeance, what is so dangerous about that is it can also turn into pride. When you try to make, when you think that the person who wronged you should be humbled, you and you're going to do it, what you're doing is exalting yourself to God's level. You are making yourself comparable to God. You see this in where Absalom, even though David was chosen by God and was the rightful king, Absalom had made it, had decided that he would be a better king, even to the point where being turning himself into a narcissist. He started pulling people aside and explaining to them how he would be a better king than David. Now, if you're at your job, at your family, or even in a group of friends, and one person is talking about how they could be so much better and so-and-so doesn't know what they're doing, be careful of that person because this is first not only a symptom of pride, but it is also a sign that they are frustrated or they are angry and they have not dealt with it, which means that they could be a at this point in time, they're in a very dangerous mindset. And then you see pride turn into rebellion when Absalom actually attacks David and tries to dethrone him with his own army. He also surrounds himself with people who one in one man included was the father of Ariah and, it, and the father-in-law of Bathsheba, 
we all know why this would be a bad thing, because Uriah, Uriah, not Uriah, Uriah, was killed in battle. So yeah, his father, just like Absalom, is going to want revenge. And what's interesting is his father actually tells Absalom how to defeat David, except David has a spy in um, Absalom's camp, and he's, Absalom is talking to the spy and saying, Your Bathsheba's father-in-law says this, and it's perfect. It's come in through the back and go through unnoticed. David's spy, interestingly enough, doesn't actually tell him a plan. He simply goes, oh no, you're better than that. You can take him head on. Let's go. You're the best. You're, you're amazing. Ready? Go get him. Yeah, do that. That's right. You can win. Go get him. Here's the problem with pride and exalting yourself. When all you see is yourself, you are actually blinding yourself. Because like I said, if Absalom had just listened to that first person, he would have easily defeated David. And he could have become the king. But because of the fact he was getting his ego stroked, and he didn't, and he liked what he heard, he listened to the spy. Therefore, Absalom was defeated by army, by David's army. Absalom then took off running. And on his horse, he was known for having really long hair. His hair got caught in the tree, and his horse went on without him, left him hanging there. And David's general saw him hanging in the tree and ran him through with a spear. At the end of that, the general comes back and David asks what happens to Ab what happened to Absalom his response was may all who oppose you be like that man in other words your boy is dead David in response cries for Absalom this is where the final stumbling block comes into um, into flourishing. The stumbling block of impatience. Because when Absalom cries and weeps for David, you realize how much David loved him, and you realize that Absalom died trying to forcefully take what was already his. Everyone knew Absalom was going to be the new king. And I wonder how many times have we done this ourselves? When we pray, even when God answers yes, there's two ways that he will. Sometimes he'll say yes, it's yours, go get it. And sometimes he will say yes, but not yet. I wonder, it is very easy to just hear the yes and then not hear the, and then that's all you hear and you forget he says wait, which causes you to move a little bit too fast and could also cause you, and could also be in fact a stumbling block. That's all I have for today. See you next time. Bye.